All right, so I'm back with some boxing talk. So we had Rolando Romero versus Manuel Jaime. Low level fight, but Raleigh Romero got the win. Now, what does it do for him? I don't know. Heard the commentary saying that he'll probably be lined up for another top fight with another guy's name who I don't want to say right now. But at the same time, you know, we'll see what happens. Point is, he got the win, and he won a unanimous decision. And that's that for that. But Raleigh, you can't really say, for me anyway, I can't really say how much better he's gotten since his last fight against a lower-level fighter. And especially when... You know, he's a guy that's big on power. And then with the distance, was he able to execute things the way that he want to? Was this guy just, you know, tougher than he thought? But he wasn't able to land the kind of shots that he really would like to have landed. But, hey, he got through the fight. That's what matters. And he won. Now, we had Caleb Plant versus Trevor McCombie. Now, this fight, these guys were both throwing a lot of hard punches. And... I think it was the second or the third round. I can't remember, but one of these rounds where McCombie threw a shot and it basically was blocked by Caleb's light right shoulder and arm. And it was like a, it was a push, basically. He went down from a push. And it goes to show you, like I told you, a lot of times these commentators, they just be talking. Most of the time, they just be talking, saying things. You know, one of the commentators even said, I don't like the way... You know, uh, uh, I don't like the way Caleb Plant looks right now. And then when you saw the replay, you realized the shot never landed. Or well, before that, the other commentator goes, oh, that was definitely no question about that. That was definitely a clean knockdown. No, it wasn't. So I told you they talk a lot. They just be saying things, and, and, and they try to just add the drama to what's going on. You know, the drama that happens in the fight, they try to add to it by saying things and riding on it. But it wasn't a knockdown at all. Well, Caleb Plant turned it around. He got the stoppage. And he was landing some hard shots right before the uh, bell sounded and the referee stopped it, and rightfully so. Now, Trevor Com uh, McCombie was, was trying to protest and say he was okay, but at that moment, he was rocked. And I don't think it was a bad stoppage. Just because a guy doesn't go down doesn't mean they're not getting hit with too many shots, and that's pretty much what happened. But at the end of the day, if you can't defend yourself the right way and you can't avoid being hit by big shots like that, it's a chance the fight will be stopped. And, if, and the fact that you can't avoid it, you'll have to always know that that is a possibility that it will happen and the fight will be stopped. So it doesn't matter if people are saying, yeah, but I've seen worse. Yeah, we, you know, I've seen worse as well. But guess what? What happened happened. And I don't think it was a bad stoppage. And at the end of the day, a lot of fighters are walking around here now, whether they admit it or not, there's certain fights they wish they didn't have or certain punches they wish they would have avoided. There's no sense to let a guy stand there and just take a pound like that and even to say, I'm okay, yeah, you're okay now, but you wasn't then. Okay, Danny Garcia, Eris Landy, Laura. I don't know what's going on with Danny Garcia. I know he tweeted that, you know, he dared to be great and it just didn't go his way. I'm paraphrasing, but... I don't see what hurt him. I mean, one shot didn't even land. He got hit with the jab, and it was, I mean, it wasn't even anything powerful. But he went down, and in, to me, he quit. Okay, um, why did he quit? I mean, I don't see what happened so unusual. I, I, don't, I don't know. Whatever happened with him, he lost a lot of credibility behind that. And even if he says the weight was too much or whatever it may be, I don't think I'm the only one that under that that saw something land on him that was like a just, and he decided, okay, I'm done. I don't want any more. And he got right up after the count, so it's like, I mean, it was waved off. So I don't know if anybody really wants to see Danny Garcia fight at any weight. And even if he comes back with a whole, well, I'm going through something. You know, well, I was I was at my lowest. I wasn't in my right mind, or whatever it may be. That type of performance will not warrant you to be in another big fight. 
And if you can't handle 160, well, what do you go back to 154? You know, at the end of the day, it makes you really look at him and think whatever he's going through or went through, don't know. That's something he has to decide, you know, what he wants to do as far as his future. But does he have it anymore? He didn't look hungry. He looked slow. He didn't look sharp against a guy that's much older than he is. Much older. And he just didn't look good at all. So I don't know, you know, what's going on with Danny Garcia. But that was a terrible performance. And I don't even know why he showed up to the fight. Because he showed up, but he forgot to fight. And basically... It was just an awful performance. Don't know what's left for him, but we got what we got out of that. Laura got the win. He made him quit. Well, he made him make up his mind, <laughs> help him make up his mind to quit. But he definitely quit. Now, Canelo, the Canelo fight, um, you know, Berlanga came to this fight damn near 200 pounds and it doesn't matter um i never saw berlanga as a real threat you know whenever you have a puncher people always say the same things they always talk about a puncher's chance and how dangerous the kid is look i think berlanga is at a point where okay he's a decent fighter and he's not on canelo's level by no stretch of the mind like i said you know months back when we first got the announcement they're going to make this Puerto Rico versus Mexico and you know but this is a fight nobody really cared for nobody really wanted once the fight happened you know it was announced that it was official people you know okay let's get behind the fight that we want to win well basically once again Puerto Rico versus Mexico and and I never had even any interest in this fight and the fight went the distance and so we all know that there's three fights out there for Canelo that people have interest in. And outside of those fights, at this point in Canelo's career, for one, you know, he's made it clear that he wants to fight who he wants to fight. And pretty much, unless someone is giving him money that he's not worth, the fight itself isn't worth, the opponent isn't worth, that he's not fighting them. Um, You know, so once again, if you're asking for $200 million to fight against Benavidez, once again, you handpicked Berlanga, and Berlanga definitely wasn't worth whatever he even got paid from Canelo, you know, and on top of that, nobody really cared about this fight, I know I didn't, so outside of Benavidez, you have Bevo and you have Crawford, those are the three fights that people care to see, I don't care if people think Canelo wins, I don't care if they think Canelo loses. That's the three fights that people want to see him in. Okay, and pretty much Crawford said he was no longer interested in Canelo. Turkey al you know, some months ago said he was no longer interested in the Canelo fight because he offered Canelo some good money um, to fight against Crawford, and he decides he doesn't want to do it. Okay, um, now they were both at the fight, and they both turn around and say that they, they want the fight now. They're coming after Canelo. Okay, well, if the fight happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I'm not going to, you know, cry over any of it. You know, it's a fight that with either one of those guys that the public deserves more so than it's just a fight that should happen just because. Now, I don't think Canelo beats Bevo at all. And at the end of the day, it was it's already been made clear that you know, uh, they're going to do everything in their power to keep Bevel away from Canelo at 168. Now, if Canelo decides that he wants to go through with a rematch with, well, with Bevel, I say he loses the fight. But it's not like the fight shouldn't happen. At the end of the day, Canelo already showed he doesn't want to fight interest. He showed he doesn't want, he doesn't have any interest to fight Crawford. And he has no interest to fight um, Benavidez. I told you guys a long time ago, he was going to end up fighting Berlanga. I had people come in the comment section saying, nah, nah, where you getting that from? Man, come on, yo, he's not ducking Benavidez. Benavidez this, Benavidez that. I said, okay, your opinion is your opinion. But when they end up fighting, I'm going to revisit this comment section. Yeah. 
what happened. Doesn't have to be the very next fight, but it's a fight to avoid fighting who he should be fighting. Now, with that performance, it was decent. It was decent. And again, it went the distance. I don't think Canelo beats Bevel, and I don't think that he beats. Uh, um, I don't put it like this. I don't know that he beats Benavidez or not. I just think Crawford is too small. Don't be fooled by the performance. It was a decent performance, and although Crawford can box, I just, I, I just can't feel it. I, I just can't feel him beating Canelo at 168 pounds. I, I, I just, you know, certain things you feel, you, you feel like that confidence of you see something that you know this person got it. I just think Crawford's too small, man, and I would want Crawford to win. But I just don't think he's big enough or strong enough. I, and, and that's the only thing that Canelo has over him. And I just don't see Crawford, especially fighting with that counterpunch style, I just don't see him beating Canelo. But I, that doesn't mean the fight shouldn't happen. Now, for me, I don't care about the fight because of the guy having to jump up so many weight classes to do so. And I just feel like... Like I said, when it, is, it was two guys there in Morrell and in Benavidez that this fight should have happened a long time ago. But it is what it is. Canelo's going to fight who he wants to fight. Crawford, same thing. He only wants to fight who he wants to fight. So it's more of a cash out. Let me get this, try to get this big payday and then just walk away. And for Canelo, it's similar, only Canelo's not talking about walking away from boxing. So at the end of the day, when you look at all of it, to me, it's just, you know what? What's going to happen is going to happen. We don't need to keep talking about who should fight who and who's ducking who. Um, and really dwelling on it. These guys are going to do what they want to do. It's as simple as that. So, anyway, Canelo got the win. I won't be shocked if he ends up rematching Caleb Plant. Yes, just to avoid a Benavidez fight, a Beevil fight, or a Crawford fight. Because despite what what a Canelo fan thinks or what other people um, are afraid to say or they don't want to say because they want to try to show favor to Canelo. Canelo doesn't want to fight any one of those three guys. It's plain and simple. He's made it clear. He doesn't want to fight them. And no matter who he fights, he's not asking for $200 million. So it's obvious he sees a threat in these guys, and that's why he doesn't want to fight them. It's, he's not as confident that he can beat them, and Beaver already beat him. And people make it seem like he's doing Beevil a favor with the rematch. No, Beevil beat you. You need Beevil. Beevil don't need you. It's really simple. This is boxing. And this is what boxing is now. And for the people who keep crying about, we need this fight, we need that fight. We, well, hey, listen, it is what it is. These guys are going to fight who they're going to fight. You know, funny thing is Shakur Stevenson you know because he got injured he was supposed to be co-main event on a uh, um, undercard well this is what I think okay and, and people need to understand this I feel like when guys are passing up on these opportunities to fight the guys that they that they could fight and should fight because they think that they're going to get more money and they, they feel like they're worth more money. Even though their resume doesn't say so or or, or their, their pay-per-view numbers or their, 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 you know, how many tickets they sell. When you pass up on a fight, the times has changed. This this is not the era of the Ray Leonard versus Hearns, the Ray versus Hagler, Leonard versus Hagler, you know, Leonard versus Duran, Hearn versus Duran, Hagler versus Duran. This is not that, 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 that mindset is not there and these fighters and business-wise, it's just not the same thing. So when I look at that, I say, okay, you know what? Here's a situation where sometimes we have injuries that we don't heal from the way we need to. Now, Shakur's opponent wasn't all that good, but it kept him active, and it was like every time a guy fights, you think, okay, is this going to be a step closer to the bigger fights? And it's never a guarantee, but... I'm pretty sure Shakur looked at what was going on and said, you know what, man, I, I really wish 
I was on that, on, on that card. I wish I was able to get in there. Because now when you look at Shakur Stevenson and you think, every, right, keep talking about him versus uh, Tank Davis, uh, you know, him versus Lomachenko, or him, you know, it's always they, they make these matchups, but all these black guys are getting older, man. And every injury, everything, you know, that can possibly happen that can cause you to not be the same fighter, um, you never know until you, you know, see these guys back in the ring, what they bring to the table. But it is what it is, and we'll see what happens, and that's all we can do. Deontay Wilder, not done. Now, the word that I got about Deontay is that the fights that is trying to be made is, one, him and Francis Ngannou, and two, which I should, well, maybe, <laughs> well, two was, was uh, Anthony Joshua. Now, this is the way I see it. I don't care to see him fight Anthony Joshua at this point. Now, for the sake of saying we got AJ versus Wilder at this stage where this man has been beaten up by Joseph Parker. Had to get his arm twisted to fight Zhang. Got destroyed by Zhang. Okay, if he's going to fight Anthony Joshua, if that's a fight that they would actually make happen right now, then you know what? They could have just went back on their promise that AJ had to win and Wilder had to win for them to fight each other and make them fight then and there. And this would be going against exactly what Turkey al Sheikh said. He has a vision for boxing and how he wants to make boxing different from everything else. Because if you did that, this would be nothing but a political move. Because what has Deontay Wilder done to earn a fight with Anthony Joshua? Absolutely nothing. So now we're going over hurdles and, 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 and moving the goalposts just to make a fight happen when the guy never earned it. But what about Joseph Parker, who beat Deontay Wilder? What about Zele Zhang, who beat Deontay Wilder? So we're just going to skip over the winners and give the loser a shot just because? What did that do for boxing? I'm not concerned about guys lining their pockets. They're rich regardless, but I'm not concerned about that. So if Turkey al Sheik is all about what's good for boxing, then this is a fight that should not even happen because let's just be honest, Deontay Wilder has done nothing to earn his shot. He lost his shot when he lost to Parker. He had another shot against Zhang and he lost that. So for him to end up in the ring with AJ without winning is completely stupid. And that means Turkey al Sheik would be losing his focus on what's going on. Nobody else is trying to put that fight together outside. So what would be the purpose? As far as Francis Ngannou goes, you know, I was hoping that Anthony Joshua put the nail in his coffin in terms of his boxing career because I'm sick of seeing these guys cross over, jump in the boxing ring just to make tons of money, and they don't really care about the sport. And I don't care about him saying, you know, oh, he loved the sport, boxing is his first love. No, I told you guys, pay attention to what people say. It's like him telling, you know, Tyson Fury, you're lucky you're protected by the rules of boxing. Otherwise, you're nothing to me. And he would destroy Tyson Fury, right? But yet, he loves boxing so much. So that's a comment you should never make. So now, if Deontay Wilder was to be the guy, was to beat Francis Ngannou, which I think is a much safer choice than, than, than Anthony Joshua, and he doesn't even deserve that, the only thing you can say about Deontay Wilder is, with his lack of skill, well, maybe he has a chance to knock Ngannou out. But at the same time, Ngannou may knock him out. But regardless, if he was the beat Ngannou, <clears throat> what does that mean? So, okay, you beat Ngannou. Now what? That puts him in a, a position to fight for a top spot when basically Ngannou just got iced in two rounds. Now, if he loses to Ngannou, then all of a sudden now, let's try to elevate Ngannou back into a spotlight high profile fight because he beat a guy that just got beat twice in a row back to back I don't see the purpose of it and I really don't understand how people are so forgetful of what happened and how a guy didn't earn his way and now people want to throw okay want to throw these fights to the person and say hey just for the sake of making it happen AJ versus Wilder is just played out. 
It should have happened a long time ago, and it didn't. Wilder even jumped ship and went over there and joined Team Eddie Hearn in Matchroom. Okay, so that's something nobody thought they'd ever see. He went through all of that, and he still lost. And basically, if he beat Zhang, they was trying to put him versus Jared Anderson, but he lost. Jared Anderson just got beat. So do you want to see Deontay Wilder come back and fight the loser of fights, or do you want to see him come back and fight somebody that's formidable? Well, we already know some guys he don't want to fight. And in fact, I know he doesn't want to fight Bacoli. For sure, he'd go to sleep against him. So, if this was to happen, this is nothing but the same, let's protect Wilder or put him in there. One, we're going to either protect Wilder and try to give him the easiest fight possible, or let's put a fight together where, hey, let's see if, if people, how they react to him versus AJ. If they still want to see that. No, I sure don't, because like I say, he didn't earn it. But the other side of that is, who can we make him a sacrificial lamb for? And who else out there do you really want to see Wilder fight against? Now people have gotten to the point where they're full-blown saying that, well, no, he's not the same fighter. He lost his hunger and all of these type of things. Well, bottom line, if a guy has lost his hunger, lost his killer instinct, ETC, why would you want to see him fight? And if he's going to fight people that pretty much don't have a high profile in the ring, doesn't have a good resume, and don't have a respectable career, well, what do you gain out of beating someone like that? Just saying, guys. All of these things, comment below. Let me know what y'all think about it. And I will see you guys real soon with some more boxing talk.